It's been a long week, right? Are you ready to wind down? Why not? It's time for the Wine Time Fridays podcast with Shelly and Phil. Neither are sommeliers, but both have a deep passion for life, each other, and of course, delicious wine. And now, here to talk about this week over a glass of wine is Shelly and Phil. It's wine time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wine Time Friday with Shelly and Phil on this Friday, February 23rd, episode 201. Shelly, it's the start of our next 100 today. Mm-hmm. Last week we had... I can't believe we've done 200 episodes. It is it is really hard to believe, I know. Um, last week is 200. We start the next uh, 100 today with 201. And uh, Shelly, let's get started. Happy Friday. It is wine. Sorry, it's wine time. Um, I want to start right away by, because we didn't do this last week, because we're so just enveloped with our 200th episode. Now, we forgot to thank Barry Aiken uh, for Wines Like Music. Uh, he, it was so much fun. Yeah. Just so much fun. Uh, if you have a chance, go back and listen to that. Uh, it was a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> Now, uh, we have a reception wine. Why is it what? that whenever we're filming or doing 100th, we're always in Southern California? Uh, <laughs> well, we're, we're not. We were at 100, but we recorded 200 here, and it is up and live. It is, but. Oh, we're, no, it's not. We're in, Sorry. We'll okay. Cut all that out. You're right. We're going to be in California when it drops. Yes. That's, that's a my, great point. That's my point. <laughs> that is a great point. Uh, yeah, we recorded 100 with Lindsay and Brian down in Joshua Tree. And although we recorded 200 in Coeur d'Alene, it is publishing while we are in San Diego, or at least en route. We should be there by now. In San <laughs> Diego. Be there by now. In rainy San Diego oh, for the Social fun. Media Marketing World 2024. Um, our reception wine for the first time in many weeks is this Old Soul 2021 Estate Grown Chardonnay. I don't need to show it. It's not a featured wine, but it is a a uh, a reception wine. That it's been a while since we've had that. Well, very golden. Very golden. Some mm-hmm. oak, obviously. Mm-hmm. By the way, I got that at nice. uh, grocery outlet uh, for a very good price. We test those wines out quite a bit before we buy quite a bit because we don't even buy quite a bit. Well, Quite I mean, a bit is three bottles. Yeah, three, four, five bottles, something <laughs> like that. So uh, we have uh, actually three. We are doing, since Open That Bottle Night 24 is tomorrow, February 24th, we are going to combine Open That Bottle Night. Hang on. You forgot the wines? Yes. Come on, minutes. Hopefully, you're cutting that part out of uh, oh, the video too. Yeah, because yes. I'll see myself leave. <laughs> okay, we're starting with this one. There's a little bit there. I'm going to get a paper towel. Why is it doing that? Um, I don't know, but I was watching it because there has been some drippage from time to time. Mm. Not a lot, but. Yeah, they'll start. They'll get us that means air got in. Maybe I'm not sure. So since tomorrow is uh, open that bottle night 2024, we are combining our open that bottle night experience. Uh, we are not having a party, um, primarily because we're not, gonna be we're not in town. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do an old world versus new world wine. And so we're going to get started because we have three to taste through. All Nebbiolo grapes. All Nebbiolo grapes. And so we've had a lot of firsts this year on Wine Time Fridays. We've done record. Wow. <laughs> We've done recordings on a pool table. 
too much nitrogen. Recordings on a um, on a riddling a automated riddling rack. Can I have your non gemmed glass, please? Thank you. And so we've now, had to label our glasses. Yeah, because we're going to try to. It's our little wine charm. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, just so we remember. Um, yeah, it's, I was going to get little this ones that go on the stem, but you had them nice and tied together. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Here's yours. This is a New World Nebbiolo. Uh, yes, we're also going to have next week because it was really difficult to find a New World Nebbiolo. So we yeah. found one from Savaya which we're having Jared Funk on next week. We'll probably mention that a few times today. This is a 2020 uh, Savaya Cellars Nebbiolo, 40 bucks at the winery. See, doesn't that look nice when it's right there? Beautiful. Let me just do that. Uh, so we'll do a proper toast and then uh, as we work through this, we'll start filling the glasses and talking a little bit about old world versus new world, where Nebbiolo is really known to come from, a little bit about open that bottle night, which I didn't put in our notes because I feel like we're pretty good at <laughs> reciting that right now. And this just smells fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, it, the color on this is very uh, Pinot Noir-ish. In terms of, mm -hmm. it's it's fairly light. Uh, to health, wealth, and abundance, gratitude, romance, and uh... peace. On earth. <laughs> I forgot it had a cling before you said peace on earth. <laughs> All right, let's give this a whirl. Delicious. It, it's just so good. I get some. Those sour cherry candies from a long time ago. What, who were they? You don't know. They had sour cherry, sour apple, fire sticks. They're oh, watermelon yeah. sticks, fire sticks, cherry sticks. Jolly Rancher. That's who there you go. Um, and Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about Jolly Rancher. Uh, last week was um, Global Nebbiolo Day. No. <laughs> In a couple of weeks is Global Nebbiolo Day. So this is kind of good that we're doing this. Uh, funny, you know, we don't do a lot of sparklers, don't do a lot of champagnes. But this year, I feel like we've done a whole lot of both of those, really. And to the point where Shelly's like, go to a restaurant now? I'm going to order French fries and champagne. And I kind of like that. That's very cool. Um, but she we don't have. Too. What's that? <laughs> well, well uh, champagne. champagne. Uh, <laughs> we don't have a lot of Nebbiolo either. So we're going to talk so a little Nebbiolo bit. Nebbiolo is the grape. Yeah, that, that's the grape. And while I'm open that, uh, the next one, if you want to talk a little bit about that, that'd be good. So Nebbiolo is the grape. The grape. But when, as just like. Any of the sparkling wines or the Chardonnays or the Pinot Noirs, when they're in Europe, they are named for the region that they come from. So this Nebbiolo is from Washington State. So we don't have any special name for it except for the real grape name because in the United States um, and, and much of the rest of the world, not Europe, um, calls the wine by the grape it's called. So we're also going to taste through two other ones that are both Nebbiolo, but they come from Piedmont, so they have different names. Yeah, it's funny um, because I handed Shelly the, the show notes. She's like, you know, I'm already confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to do a little studying and asking. Well, so, so yeah. Both of these next ones are from Piedmont region of Italy, and they're both Nebbiolo, and one is called a Barbaresco, and one is called a Barolo. So I ask, why are they two different names from different region? But I guess they're different regions of Piedmont. Day. Exactly. So Barolo is in Piedmont. Also, um, uh, you can spell it 
Piedmont for American or a Piemonte, Piemonte for, Piemonte. yeah, for, right. and that's Italian. actually the Italian. Exactly. So a um, little look behind the, the curtain. I'll throw together some show notes, fairly generic, semi-structured, but just so we have some talking points. If heaven forbid, we don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> so I give those to Shelly. They end up going in a notebook, but she writes notes on them. She's a great note taker. Uh, we are different that way. I'm a horrible note taker by hand. I do all mine on, on the computer. But uh, so, yeah, she came down and ready to record. And I'm like, what's going on? So it it really is fairly simple because same grape, completely different profiles. Mm -hmm. So as a recap. And to be honest, we have not really been fans of Barolos. No. With the Barolos really we've had. pretty big and they really need to be laid down in cellar for a long time. Hence, we're having a 2015 right now. Right. Compared um, to a 2020. Uh, 2020. And we have a, a 2020 Barbaresco. Uh, that it's so interesting because Barolo historically really has been built to lay down. Mm -hmm. But there are some Barolo wars that we'll talk about a little bit. Um, it's still going on, but it really, because... They weren't selling much. <laughs> They're very spendy because they have to be laid down so long. And mm -hmm. so uh, it was a part of the whole profile. Uh, quick recap and a review on old world versus new world. Old world wines typically come from Europe, typically, and have long winemaking traditions. That is really concise. I like that. It's very easy to understand. New world wines originate from newer regions like the U.S., Australia. Argentina. Yeah. So that's an interesting question. Would Argentina. I think they're New World. New World. Mm -hmm. Interesting. South Africa. So um, they don't have, they're not steeped in rich tradition. They may be steeped in rich well, tradition. We just don't. Yeah. Know what that. do we say? South African just celebrated their 324th birthday or something. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of years. Yeah. So um, now old world versus new world Nebbiolo. Uh, as we have discussed, this Nebbiolo is generally found in Piedmont, Piemonte. Um, I do have that note somewhere here. It's not showing up. Here we go. Piemonte or Piedmont. Now, Piedmont is nestled in northwestern Italy. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's bordering France and Switzerland. La, it, there's a land steeped in history of gastronomy, which I wasn't even going to include that food word. And drink. Yeah, food and drink. It's the art of food and drink and things like that. And stunning natural beauty. It's got the Alps right there. Uh, renowned, renowned for its rolling hills, adorned with vineyards, majestic uh, mountains and uh, of the Alps, and charming medieval towns. Now. Piedmont offers more than just this great wine, okay? Uh, land of Barolo and Barbaresco, which we're going to pour in a minute. Barolo has been known as the king of wines, the wines of king, the wine of kings. What I found out is Barbaresco is kind of the queen of wines. And of course, the queen rules the house. Always. <laughs> Always. Thank you, Mari. I was going <laughs> to just say the same exact thing. Uh, we're going to see Mari this weekend. So... Um, so that's fantastic. But uh, there are other regions within Piedmont, uh, like Barbara, uh, Barbara de Asti comes there. There's Gavi, uh, Roero. Roero. Um, again, different varieties and things like that. Some of the varieties you'll find in Piedmont, uh, Moscato, Arnis, Cortise, and Malvasia all come and from Malvasia. Um, Piedmont. And then, of course, besides Nebbiolo, there's Barbera, Dolcetto, and Fresa. So confusing. But it's interesting because um, Barolo and Barbaresco has to be 100%. And, and the other ones don't? No, you can mm -hmm. blend those in. Um, there's other things that go on there um, among them, only because we like to talk about food and wine pairings. But truffles and hazelnuts come. They're very well known. Do you know, Shelly, that the region of Piedmont is famous for its prized white truffles? I did not know that. And these can go 
for up to six thousand dollars a pound, pound. Mm -hmm. they're also known for hazelnuts so mm -hmm. um this is really hard when we do the teaching it's so much easier when guests do the teaching <laughs> <laughs> uh should we pour should we let's see uh we're about 16 minutes in should we pour yes. these other two in, at the same time during the break or go ahead Okay, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have wine in our glasses and we'll talk a little bit about it and we'll start doing some tasting. This is going to be fun, some side by sides. When this we come is back. The Barbara. Ooh, wow. Lighter. Well, it's got a little brown. I know. It's not that I old think either. This is no. So, Barbaresco may be closer to a new world, Nebula. And this is the Brollo. Gravata Barbaresco. There you go. That's good. Ooh, this is a little brown. Yep. This is okay. Nine years older. <laughs> Welcome back to Wine Time Fridays. While we were gone, uh, we have been working on filling glasses. Um, so in our glass, we now have a another 2020 Nebbiolo from Barbaresco. It is the Rivada Barbaresco, about 25 bucks. By the way, I said 40 bucks at Savaya for that one. This is about 25 bucks. Got this at Total Wine. And then in our last glass is a 2015 Marchese di Barolo Comune Barolo, 120 bucks at Wine Library. It's a 2015, but there's a little interesting note about this, Shelly. Um, well, we, it's on sale right now. It is. Yes. How did you know that? I looked. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, what's the sale price, Shelly? Is it fifty nine? It's sixty dollars. Fifty nine. But wait, 59. there's more. Really? It's a part of the last chance sale. Ah. So I was gonna say that it's in our notes about. You have to um, join. Well, you have to. Yeah, you have to join, but it doesn't cost anything to join. And they do these from time to time at Wine Library uh, through their Wine Text uh, model and program, where you get a text every day. It's usually a really good price. But yes, this Barolo. Uh, I actually call Wine Library and talk to Matt um, today because I wasn't sure about the DOCG thing. <laughs> Our dog is under the table somewhere. <laughs> I didn't know about the DOCG. And so uh, I called just to make sure, uh, and he confirmed both of these, uh, Barbaresco and the Borolo, are DOCGs. That happens to be our wine word of the week, which is from 3D Kitchens by Design. And so I'm going to do that. I just want to touch on that real quick. And we will start drinking wine, Shelly. Don't worry. <laughs> like I said, there's a <laughs> lot to talk about. Um, so the 3D Kitchens by Design wine word of the week, DOCG. Um, th so there's DOC in Italy, among others. There's DOC and DOCG. And what does that stand for? I'll tell you. Right. DOC is... Um, it. it, it Think of it kind of as a regional stamp of origin with some quality standards. Mm -hmm. The DOCG, you want to think of it more as a prestigious seal of exceptional quality guaranteed by the government. Now, DOC stands for Denominazione <laughs> di Origine mm -hmm. Controllata. Otherwise, that's the DOC, otherwise known as Designation of Controlled Origin. Okay, mm -hmm. you want to say what the DLCG stands for? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds... I never took Italian. <laughs> well, it's I took French and Spanish, and that gets me. Well, it's kind of that. like Spanish. Denom, denomi. I I didn't struggle the first time. Denomi nazione di origine controllate e garantita, which. Garantita. Translates to designation of controlled and guaranteed origin. Origin. So. So we don't really have those kind of things no. in the U.S., but in France they do, and in Germany you'll see 
Wally Tatswin, Mick Pradica, things like that. So that's what this is. Yeah. Um, in the fact, the DOCG is a like an estate line sort of. We yeah. have we have estate lines and it's sort of like that. Yeah, and exactly. there are rules. Um, if you're going to call rules, it yeah. a estate line, I think that. Yeah, there are rules in this too. Yeah, there are absolutely rules and law. These are laws. So um, let's go ahead and toast the Barbaresco and then toast the Barolo so that we can actually start. So this is the New World Nebbiolo. This is the Barbaresco. And if you're on YouTube, you can see they're kind of similar in color. Still, the New World is a little lighter. The Barbaresco, similar though. Uh, hashtag cheersing. Cheersing. Has a lot to more tannins. It does have a lot more tannins, doesn't than, it? Than the Washington one, yes. What I find interesting about these Italian wines is that when we talk about new world versus old world, then it's normally that the old world, old world wines are lighter and less alcohol. And more fruity. Just lighter and less tannins. And then the new world ones are like bigger, like the Washington, California, big, bigger alcohol, bigger tannins. But this seems to be the opposite because um, I find that the old world Nebbiolos are much more tannic. Their alcohol is not bigger, really, because I think this is 14%. Uh, the 14.5 for the uh, Savaya, 14 mm -hmm. for the Barbaresco, and the Barolo uh, is also 14. So right, so similar, less but, alcohol, yeah, it's less. but certainly not tasting like less alcohol. Well, it's just bigger tannins. Oh boy, smell is Barolo. <laughs> so this is kind of a treat. So the Barolo is older, remember? Yeah, so these are not perfectly head to head comparisons by any stretch um, because this is a, this is nine years old. On the first two, yeah, 20, 2015 on this on Barolo. One. It's got a very rich, Smell, but again, lightish. Cheersing. Cheersing. Lightish, not really a brown edge, just sort of the same um, color overall. Again, <laughs> a lot of tannins. A lot of tannins. Still not liking the Barolos. Yeah. Really? I mean, but Italian wines need food, so that's the thing. They're made to be of paired course. with food. Um, I wanna... Still not my favorite. Not super fruit forward. Um, on the Barolo, they're saying um, the on the nose, dark cherry, floral, camphor, truffle, leather. I get the leather for sure. On the palate, velvety tannins. I don't think those are velvety. <laughs> Um, dark forest fruits. I'm wondering what a dark forest fruit is. A truffle? But I, I, <laughs> I would even take the word fruit out or fruits out. Dark yeah. forest. You get I'm that. Getting um, spice, dark cherries, star anise, white pepper. So one thing um, that I thought was interesting is this wine was rated pretty high points by two different people. Or two different places, mm -hmm. and what they tasted um, was so different. So let's see. On the ninety-five points on decanter, dark cherry floral <laughs> nose on the palate. The wine is fresh, vibrant, and young, with velvety tannins and layers of dark forest fruits, spices, and dark cherries. On the ninety-three on the wine enthusiasts, they get camphor, star anise. Grilled herb aromas and a smoky note on the palate. Fine grain tannins support wild cherry, star anise, and a hint of white pepper. So, so far, the only thing they agree upon is the star anise 
and the dark cherries. So that just goes to show you, you can taste what you want in any wine, depending on who your you background, are, <laughs> your background and yeah. what you've been used to tasting. Yeah. Because certainly I didn't grow up with a lot of truffles. One of them said tar, and I'm like, yeah, I grew up with tar in the street because we didn't have paved roads in Canada where I lived. And so they'd have to tar the roads every so often. So I get that. I get the camphor because cough syrup has a lot of camphor in it. You keep talking. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say whatever you taste is what you taste. That's right. I am really I like, tasting the age on that. I like on that this 15. Supply. You know what? I do too. I went back. Oh, first of all, really quite different. Very They're different. really different. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Barbaresco, we if we could have found a 2015, it would have been a little bit better head to head. Um Although maybe the Barbaresco is not really made for aging. I know the Barolo is. Yeah, the Barolo is. Um I, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Barolo Wars right now because there was a time uh in the 70s and 80s where Barolo witnessed a superheated clash and it's been called the Barolo Wars. Uh traditionalists, okay, who and I'm not sure what this one would be. I'm guessing it's probably a traditional one. It is. It yeah. Is, yeah. Um those traditionalists um they love the long maceration and aging in large oak barrels, but they clashed with the modernists advocating shorter fermentation, smaller barrels, and earlier release. Now they used to age them in huge barrels. Right. And 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 just let that oak just kind of get in there and it's more surface um area. And so it's but it takes time. It takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And so here are these wines sit there and they're not selling them. So it, here we are between um, sell the wines and get that money back to put into more wine making mm -hmm. or sit on them. And who knows if you're going to get those prices. But it was it's really easy, uh, interesting. The modernists, they were, they were looking for... They do get the prices, though. It's just that, can you afford to have it sitting so long? Right. Um, the modernists, they, they really like the fruitier, more international styles, while the traditionalists defended the time-honored tannic character. By the way, both of these are, are very tannic. Um, and the They're debate... Not velvety. <laughs> no, no, but that Savaya is. Oh, yeah. Oh, that Savaya is very vel velvety. Or silky, um, more silky. Yep. The debate sparked fierce competition, divided opinions, and ultimately shaped the future of Barolo. The war hasn't really been um, um, going tight, but it hasn't ended either. It's led to diverse Barolo landscape, blending tradition with innovation. There was a story of this family that was making Barolo, and the son was going to be the next in the generation, next in line, but he wanted, he was more of a modernist. Mm -hmm. And he actually took a chainsaw to those big barrels and, and his father disowned him, oh, no. taken out of the inheritance. Wow. Yeah. So um, this, this is not, I mean, this is a way of life for folks. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit. Well, let's Maybe take, he should oh. have waited till he inherited it. And then have this big idea. Well, um, Next, we're going to talk to Jared, and I. he's going to be more like that modernist for sure. Mm -hmm. um, also in line with the family, the Funk family, mm -hmm. uh, in making wine. So it's it's pretty cool. I was going to say, let's take a one more break, and when we come back, we'll kind of wrap things up a little bit. Um, yeah, let's do that. Welcome back to Wine Time Fridays, episode 201, where we are talking all things Nebbiolo. Um, I just so love it when you do that. <laughs> um, okay, a couple more things about the DOC versus DOCG. Okay, DOC primarily ensures origin, origin authenticity while specific quality standards exist. Individual wines might vary within the broader DOC designation. The DOCG 
offers additional guarantee, the garantita, of high quality uh, beyond just the origin. Now, the number of DOC uh, designations in Italy, 300. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Should be less DOCG then. 74. DOC, yeah, DOCG. Yep. And 74. so that's reflecting mm -hmm. a little bit more of the exclusivity and focus on mm -hmm. exceptional quality. And lastly, the price points. Um, like I said, this Barolo is 120. The Barbaresco, we paid 25. Uh, the DOC wines. What? This is also a DOCG, the Barbaresco, right? They are. That's true. This is a DOCG. That's exactly right. Um, by the way, I never said what this Barolo, Barolo is on the last chance sale. It's $50. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so $60 on sale, $50 for the last chance sale. Wow. And so that that's pretty good. Um, and I know that they're uh, talking correctly because when I talked to Matt with Wine Library, he said, I think we have eight bottles left. And when I looked on the last chance Mm -hmm. Sale it said eight bottles left, so that's pretty There's good. There's probably not going to be any by the time no, it airs. No, oh no, 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 no. This is a 24 hour mm -hmm. sale. I, uh -huh. I'm more or less bringing it up because I, I think if if you're smart, which our listeners are smart, mm -hmm. why not sign up for Wine Text? You don't it have. Doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost a dime, okay. and and you're getting really good value wines. Um, and all you have to do is if you want three bottles of something. By the way. I'm going to tell you. You're going to uh, buy three bottles of this? No, Don't no. Me. What I was going to say is this um, uh, last chance that went for 50 bucks um, is, is a really good reflection of that. It's $120 wine. But I found Hoopes. Is it Hoops or Hoopas? I forget now. It's Hoops, hoops. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, out of Napa. We had them on a, whoa, a year and a half ago, something like that. We also had Myra on a year and a half ago, both highly acclaimed napa producers the one of them was a 250 dollar myra last chance sale for 90 bucks Ooh, nice so i mean that's i still have some nfts that i haven't yes you do <laughs> speaking of napa guys, i think masican is one of those masican and shug shug oh really nice um so anyway uh, that's all we'll say about that. Uh, again, tomorrow is Open That Bottle Night. Shelly, you want to explain real quick about Open That Bottle Night? Open That Bottle Night is a concept yeah. from John and Dottie, who used to be um, the editors, the writers, the writers in the Wall Street Journal wine column. It's called Tastings. Yeah. Called Tastings. And people would always ask, when mm -hmm. should I drink this wine? I don't. I don't know when to do it. So I've got this finally fill in the blank wine. Yes. We're not sure when to open it. So finally they said, we're going to create a night when you open that bottle of wine that you're unsure about. You're waiting for a special occasion. You, you don't know when that's coming. So now on open that bottle night and you make the bottle of wine, the occasion. Last Saturday of every February. Yes. Um, so that's, pretty cool we had john and Dottie on that was the only episode i kind of got nervous really yeah I, I was nervous that was very fun it was great those guys were fantastic Wish we had that on video yeah if i can find it we have it somewhere have it on somewhere. a hard drive that seems to not want to open it so oh, i haven't given up but uh anyway uh we have an extra day this month to enjoy wine one it's extra day year? yeah leap year um yeah well, yeah i think jody's daughter is a leap year baby Hmm. Yeah, she's super young then. <laughs> Only has a birthday every four years. Yeah. So we've been talking a little bit about um, trying to find value wines, Naked Wines, who <laughs> been a sponsor, has got some good value wines. Um, the Wine Text last, well, Wine Text in general, but the last chance sale in the 1111 sale in November, but also Fred Meyer, Sherlyn, mm -hmm. is every one to three months she's putting together these blind cases for 50 bucks so they are very good value keep an eye on that you have to be in Coeur d'Alene though yeah yeah you have to be in Coeur d'Alene well, many of our listeners are in Coeur d'Alene uh but honestly I'm sure that there are other things like this around um that 11 11 sale through wine library 11 dollars and 11 cents um per bottle and shipping is 11 dollars and 11 cents for the case uh we picked up a, 
another guest, the Rocky Pond. Elizabeth, oh, yeah. yeah. So you we'll never, be going there soon. We are going to go there soon. That's going to be fun. For a media event. Um, I think, honestly, other than some of the wines we enjoyed this week and what we got coming up, we're about ready to wrap up. Uh, why don't you rate these, Shelly? We haven't no, rated a wine for a I while. I don't want to rate these because I really don't You're not like, going to offend anybody. I don't like Barolo, <laughs> so I don't want to rate them. Okay. I well, love the Savaya. <laughs> the Savaya is really good. We're going to revisit the Savaya next week with Jared Funk um, because it's part of the lineup that we're going to uh, taste through. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lob you up a, an easy one to hit. You want to talk real quick in, about the wines we've had this week? Not very many. <laughs> <laughs> Scotta Family Cellars, Old Vine Zinfandel, Columbia Crest, Uncork Chardonnay. That's pretty funny. Funny, funny, funny. And Red Diamond, <laughs> Malbec. We didn't dislike it. We didn't dislike it. It's a very inexpensive price point, and it came in one of those um, um, dozen. Yeah, the, the uh, blind case. Blind case. Not to say that all the blind cased wines were about that price point because they No, were. we had some uh, was, yeah. Dunham, a three-legged dog in there. Mm -hmm. There was some three star uh it, there was some good wines in there the, were you, you i did add what it was up. the price that you if added? i took the retail mm -hmm. like 267 for 50 dollars for 50 bucks yeah That's pretty good it's really good and it's wines that they're trying to get off the shelf because they don't move the mm -hmm. corporate there we go can't see myself uh the corporate the you know, the kroger corporation is like you're not selling very much we're gonna move it so by the way, we're trying to get Tiridus into Fred Meyer here. Yeah. We're talking whoever will listen. Get <laughs> Tiridus in. Yes. Um, and go to Walla Walla for a wine tour oh my gosh, before go to it Prosser. becomes like Napa. Yep, absolutely. Uh, things coming up in March. The third is Mold Wine Day. The fifth, Global Nebbiola Day, which we just tasted through three of them. Next week, we're going to have one more, which is basically the same one. Uh, 13th Riesling Day, 26th International Viognier Day. I think we're having a Viognier next week as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mm -hmm. The 27th World Marcelon Day. In April, we've got on the 14th International Tanat Day. The 17th World Malbec Day. I think we should find a Washington. Malbec? Yeah. I thought you liked Red, oh, Mountain. Red Mountain Malbec. Yeah. Uh, we also have Jonathan and Dan with Foolhardy, and we've got Molly Duker, which is coming. Uh, we've got uh, Lopez Island, Shelly. Wine is on the way. Lopez hey. Island, which has what? Ziguribe. Little Madeline Angevine. And they're super good for oysters. Yes. And the fact that it's and then out some of, Oregon. Yeah. Tina. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, we're going to talk about luggage. Yeah, Sam Sharman with uh, Fly With Wine. We're not going to talk about it too much now. It's very funny how this came to be, though. Uh, anyway, um, thank you to today's sponsors. Oh, we are, we mentioned multiple times Jared Funk next week with Savaya. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you to today's sponsors, Jay Bookwalter Wines and CDA Gourmet. Um, I believe we gave some education today. I hope so. Yeah, with a little, with a little bit of knowledge wine becomes a lot less overwhelming thank you so much for being here next week you're not going to want to miss it with jared funk savaya sellers have a great weekend we will see you next week thank you for spending part of your day to wind down with shelly and phil Remember, you can listen to any episode of the Wine Time Fridays podcast by visiting winetimefridays.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And join us on our Wine Time Fridays Facebook page, Instagram, or on Twitter, which is at Vintage Tweets, for daily conversation. Until next week, here's our toast to you. To health, wealth, abundance, gratitude, peace on earth, and of course, romance. <laughs>